we have something very important going on here. There are other beings from points unknown or unconfirmed that have incredible technology that are here interacting with humanity on planet Earth for some kind of agenda. That's an existential matter right there. And it should, it should be a matter of concern to every human being. Who are these individuals? Uh, why are they here? What is their interest in us? They're obviously here for a reason. And why aren't they publicly, openly announcing themselves to us, by the way? There are probably very cogent reasons for this secrecy, all right? They're not hard to understand why. But the question becomes, how long is this secrecy going to last? It's not hard to see why secrecy on this matter began over 60, almost 70 years ago. It's not hard. But the problem is that secrets have a way of maintaining themselves and increasing themselves and growing. This particular interview we're about to do, uh, this, is a, this is a man who's in the U.S. military, who's had experiences, he says, uh, relating to knowledge of E.T., the E.T. presence here on Earth. Uh, we know he is who he says he was. His story is of great potential value. You know, if someone's trying to hoax us, trying to, to, to fake us out, could they have done enough research on their own to get the detail? And the answer is yes, you know, they probably could. You know, beyond subjecting him to a, a, a polygraph test that's going to tell whether he's lying or not, we're going to have to do our best to assess this man. I still believe in this quaint idea of freedom and self-determination. I don't want to give up on it in my lifetime. So I realize that full disclosure of this reality is probably going to be a real wild ride and maybe not always a fun ride. But uh, I look at the alternative and I see that as much worse. Yes, well, as we get older and older, I'm 77 right now. You can't live forever, you know. So if this uh, procedure I'm going to have to clean the blood doesn't work, then I've got probably a few more months to make it before my kidneys shut down, you know. So that's kind of why I'm kind of going along with the interview at this time. You're seeing that what you went through is just too important for people not to know about. Yeah. Yeah. C can you just, let, can we start at the beginning with your military career and just walk through what exactly your experiences were? Was in the drafted into the military and got into the U.S. Army. After that, I was sent to the Signal Training Center in eastern United States. What year would this be? 58. I went through the Signal Training course. And at that time, I went through the radio teletype course and also the cryptography course, crypto. They had five instructors that were getting out of military service. So they pulled the top five students and I was third in the class. So I got pulled as an instructor. Now were you at this time also working yet for CIA? No. Not yet? No. After one day, my boss came to me, and he uh, said, how would you like to, you know, make some extra money? And I said, oh, money is good. 